They say that size doesn't matter and it's all about how you use it. Well, in the case of the Stanley No. 1, it's all about the size. There is no use case, there is no job that this tool could be used for that could not be done better by any number of other planes. That doesn't stop us from wanting this diminutive beauty. Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to Tool Tuesdays. I am going to restore this gorgeous, gorgeous, tiny little plane, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! So what we have here is a very, very rare plane indeed. Uh, they were made from 1867 to 1943 in large numbers. As I just said, there is basically no use for these tiny planes. They are not comfortable to hold in any way, shape or form. I've got a, a little brass Kuangsheng version here. She's sharp. I've had it for years. I've used it very, very sparsely, but there's a reason they were made, and that was for woodshop classes in elementary school for young kids to teach them how to use hand tools. I wish we still did things like that in this day and age. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare, so uh, click the link below, but I'll talk about that all a little bit later. Okay. So here we go. There's a little bit of surface rust, nothing major. I don't want to clean it. I don't want to make it look new. So we're just gonna dust it off, oil in places, uh, clean some of the surface rust off lightly. But this is a problem. Uh, the back of that has been, has been broken and uh, we need a replacement. So rosewood, Brazilian rosewood actually. But uh, yeah, old stock, of course. Nope, I'm gonna have to take the whole thing apart. Well, that's not coming off. And it doesn't need to in this case. She's in pretty damn good condition, to be honest. And actually looks like she's been used quite a lot. Before we get to cleaning anything, I need to clean this flat. In the vise, let's go. Do you know what? Other way around. Aha! This is a leveling beam normally used for leveling frets on a guitar, but infinitely more useful than just that one task. I'm not going to perfectly match the grain, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily want to. This is uh, a repair, it's a uh, part of the story of the, uh, of the tool, and uh, I'm not going to try and hide the fact that it has been repaired. Uh, that being said, That looks about right. Yeah, let's chop some rosewood. My motto is surround yourself with beautiful tools and you will make beautiful things. Or at least end up surrounded by beautiful tools. <laughs> so it's at an angle and I need to make sure that it's glued on that side so that I have enough material on this side to carve into it. That's pretty much it. Oh, 
Perfect. There we go, we've got a perfect fit, nice and flat. Nice, plain, as it were. Um, wow, that was so, so bad. It's also relatively, I think that should actually clamp without slipping. Let's, uh, let's get it clamp, put it in the vise so that I've got free hands. Wouldn't want to drop this. And uh, let's have a look. It's not perfect, there's a gap there, but all of the pressure is going through the strong bit. I'm going to glue that up. Actually, that's worked out. That's worked out better even. It is time to call it a night and uh, I'll be back in the morning when that's dried and we will do some carving and then clean a plane up. Fun times. It's been a few days. I had some guitar building to do, but we're there. Let's get some cutting done, shall we? Removing the rest of the excess on the bandsaw at the correct angles, etc., is a bit problematic. Remember, this was glued at a, at a slant there. So it's out with the bandsaws. So hello, Squire. With the waste mostly removed, I can go and uh, sort out the final... <sighs> well, I'm going to remove a bunch of waste on a oscillating spindle sander, because that's the quickest way to do it. I could use rasps and bars, etc., but we will get to those later. This is one of my favorite machines, uh, Triton oscillating spindle sander and belt sander. I use it all the time for all sorts of stuff. Some masking tape on the sides to protect the original finish. I'm not being too precious about this. This is a, a working and worked tool, but uh, yeah, keep that a bit nice. And uh, using the Iwasaki rasps, which are particularly fine and uh, well, they're incredible tools with a, a safe edge. I can run them along my fingers along that edge and not cause any damage. And uh, going with the grain, you can get a, a very, very nice, very precise finish. And uh, eventually, by hand, carefully, bring it up so that the edges meet perfectly. Getting them. Now this shape is wrong and too long. Uh, at least it's not accurate to what they used to look like. Here's a standing number two from the uh, same sort of period. And it's much shorter than I have uh, ended up with. And more rounded. Something like that.
Guitar builders tend to use files a lot more than the average woodworker and a good fine file with a couple of different uh, radii on it is when you need it, you need it. Now, you will have noticed there's a, a portion of a hole there. We need to, uh, we need to make it whole. We need to make the hole whole. We need a whole hole. We need to surgically remove my sense of humor, I think. Anyway, we've got the thing that fits in it. We have enough hands, I'm sure. That's the way to do it. Circle jig, another tool. When you need it, you need it. Okay, now I actually can use a center point drill bit on this. I've got enough material. In times past, I've used an in-canal or inside ground gouge with the correct radius to just uh, eke out the remains of a circle. You can use small rasps, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to drill it. This is a bit delicate. Well, that looks a bit good, doesn't it? Yep, sorted. Now onto the sanding. There is, uh, there's no avoiding sanding, is there now? I'll use a leveling beam to start. Nice and straight. And eventually straight on to 240 grit because of the, uh, well, because of how fine the file was. The next stage is to use a little blonde shellac to get a finish. It'll take a couple of coats and I'm going to try and match it to a certain extent, but uh, I don't want, I want it to be obvious that this has been repaired at some point. Uh, anything less is, I don't know. In the comments, argue the morality of making a repair so perfect that it's just, oh, nobody knows it has been repaired. Shellac. In between coats, I'm gonna move on and start the restoration of the metal parts of this plane. So I have quite a bit of superficial rust I mean, it's nowhere near as bad as many, many tools I've seen. I do not want to restore this too much. I don't want to leave it absolutely perfect. Let's not lose those, shall we? So I need an abrasive and I'm going to use thread polishing rubbers. These are designed with uh, very fine abrasives inside a, a, 
a, a rubber substrate and they're very gentle and they're not going to do any damage but they will if i use the correct grade get rid of this quite happily as you can see there's one other option if that is taking too long and you feel yourself tempted to use a wire wheel on an angle grinder or something like that please don't uh, this is a machinist's scraper. They come in different shapes and sizes, and as long as this is nice and sharp, you can very gently remove the bulk of the rust that has deposited itself uh, on top of the metal, and then go on to the fine abrasives. Now this can and does remove metal, so I'm not putting much pressure on, I'm just using the 90 degree face, the 90 degree edges, on this to remove what's sitting on the surface of the metal. If I dig in, I can do some damage. So it's just a few minutes work. And uh, I've got a bunch more to do. There's always white paint on vintage tools. I don't know why or how, it just is the case. I'm not putting much pressure on, literally just being very gentle. You do want to get any abrasive dust out when you're happy that it's clean. And I mustn't forget I'm still applying shellac. Nearly there now. I'm not even putting any pressure on just the weight of the tool is doing this. Okay, so there's dust and stuff in there. Just a little bit of three-in-one oil loosens things up.
that maybe 45 minutes uh, worth of work. So far, we're good. The last thing you want to do is let this tool get rusty again. And uh, you can use three in one or Castrol every man oil. I have a vintage tool shop, I know this stuff comes by. Um, you can use something like that, but in a hot environment that burns off and you end up with even more rust after the fact. Uh, I, and in fact many, many craftsmen before me have used linseed oil in the past. And now I use penetrating guitar finishing oil because, well, it works better, it dries faster. And uh, all I'm gonna do is literally just apply a light coat of guitar finishing oil onto the exposed metal pieces and then rub the excess off. And the end result is gonna be something that looks beautiful, still has the patina of age, but is also protected from the elements somewhat. And uh, this is what we need in a more permanent way. Skillshare is a platform for creatives and curious people who are interested in learning how to do things. You 100% are such an individual because you are watching this. I, I spend an inordinate amount of time uh, browsing through their online classes, ad-free, to enlighten myself and it could be everything from basic beginner silversmithing through to accountancy through to building a website to to, to changing the logo types of your of, of an online portal for example it is mind-blowing what you have access to all for a very very reasonable monthly fee the first thousand people to click the link in the description below will get a free month of skillshare and that is well worth the effort of clicking that button and of course it also helps us as a content producer. Wow, I think that's the first time I've ever called myself a content producer in public. Well hey, now uh, I am currently watching, imbibing, learning, lifestyle photography, immersive storytelling with photo albums by Sean Dalton. This is a class for people who are interested in growing, for example, their Instagram following uh, in a, a smart, concise, yet intelligent way. And I am, uh, well, I'm about halfway through and I'm learning a lot from it. If you go and check out my personal Instagram, you will not see any progress whatsoever because I haven't got to the end yet. Uh, but it'll move forward because I'm working on it. Apply it, rub off the excess, and you're good. I mean, is it golden, but that's the rust. Oi. Ah, there you go. All right, this needs to be rubbed down just a little bit. 1200 grit, wet and dry should do. Wet's better. Just knocking the top off.
And finally, a little bit more penetrating oil. And we're going to let that, uh, let that dry for about five minutes or so, rub the excess off and we'll be done. So it would be the work of a minute or two to put some dents and scratches and, and bits and pieces in this top section to make it look like it had been there forever and nobody would really question it. I'm not going to do that. So there we go. Should we put it together again? <laughs> it's important not to over tighten this screw. Danny number one. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this process and uh, maybe have learned something or been entertained, something like that. If so, please click like and subscribe. Uh, these things are, are important and uh, I really appreciate it. Maybe I'll do that one next. Very rare. Super cool though. Uh, if you want to see more videos of this ilk, please let me know in the comments below. If you have a standing number one or anything else, actually, uh, that you don't require anymore, give me a shout. I might be interested in buying it for VintageTorshop.com. And uh, most importantly, if you have old tools that are currently unloved and unused, maybe all you need to do is spend an hour or two doing this and you will have a new favorite hand plane. Other tools may apply, of course. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah, see you soon. Goodbye. No, no, no. She's not coming home with me.